The Retirement Cafe podcast, episode 18. Make sure your estate qualifies for the residential nil rate band with solicitor Kurt Lee. Retired or thinking about retirement? You've come to the right place. Welcome to the Retirement Cafe podcast. In each episode, we bring you an important conversation with insight, tips and knowledge, all designed to help you live a fulfilling and successful life in retirement. Here's your host, Chartered Financial Planner and Accredited Later Life Advisor, Justin King. Hello and welcome to the Retirement Cafe podcast. In this episode, I am delighted to welcome back my friend and highly respected solicitor, Kurt Lee. Kurt appeared on the very first episode of the Retirement Cafe podcast back in November to share his wisdom about inheritance tax. This week, he's back to talk to me about another tax-related topic, the residential nil rate band. You've probably heard or read about the residential nil rate band in the press over the past few years. Introduced in April 2017, this new inheritance tax relief will, by 2020, enable you to pass on up to £500,000 free of inheritance tax, providing you own a property as a married couple, one million of your estate could be free of inheritance tax. As with any new tax law, there are conditions. And in this case, the conditions are complex. I recently caught up with Kurt to better understand how you can ensure your estate qualifies for the residential nil rate band. Kurt has over 20 years experience in tax planning. He's a partner at Leicester Aldridge Solicitors, specializing in the areas of inheritance tax, capital gains tax and trust planning. And as well as being a solicitor, Kurt is a chartered tax advisor and a trust and estate practitioner, authorized by STEP which is the Society of Trust and Estate Practitioners. So here's my conversation with Kurt Lee on the Retirement Cafe podcast. So once again, I am joined at the Retirement Cafe podcast by my friend and expert lawyer in tax and trust, Kurt Lee from Leicester Aldridge. Hi, Kurt. Good afternoon, Justin. How are you? Very well, thank you. Good to see you again. Yes. Um, we touched on this last time we spoke, and uh, for for those who you'd want to look back at the previous um, episodes of uh, the podcast, when we touched on inheritance tax mm-hmm. and writing wills and all that type of thing, which you gave us lots of great insight into, and we touched on this new residential nil rate band. Yes. Now, I've been to a few lectures on this, um, and um, I'm highly confused by it all. Um, <laughs> Uh, so is everyone <laughs> right. in the profession. It's not just uh, me. <laughs> uh, the the residence nil rate band. It, it, it's so complicated. So this is a this is a for those who haven't listened to the previous version of the podcast. This is about inheritance tax, and this is in addition to the nil rate band of three hundred twenty five thousand pounds. It is. So this is we we, we a couple now uh, uh, can have a million pounds they can pass on to the, to, to to their children. Potentially, <laughs> potentially yes. Um, it. It's an entirely separate relief uh, to the to the normal nil rate band, right. which is always available. The residence nil rate band is only available in certain circumstances, which I'm sure we'll come on to. It, uh, it the the rules are so complicated though. I, I honestly wish the government hadn't have bothered with it. There there were other ways of achieve, achieving their objectives, but anyway, the new residence nil rate band came into effect on the sixth of April, two thousand and seventeen. Uh, it took effect, it, it's been phased in gradually right. over a number of years. Uh, when it first came in, it was worth £100,000 per person, and it's increasing by £25,000 increments until we get to tax year 2020 21, when the relief will be worth £175,000 per person. And when you add that to the 325000 ordinary nil rate band, you get half a million pounds per person. And as between a husband and wife, that doubles to potentially a million pound of IHT relief, which fulfills the Conservative Great news. promise that they promised way back in 2010. Great news, I we should all be singing in the streets. Except there are some rules uh, that, uh, ah, people rules, have rules, to, rules. that people have to follow. Um, in many ways, the residence no rate band is an unfair tax because it's only available to those who have children and grandchildren and lineal descendants. Right. Because you have to leave your your home, your family home, 
to your lineal descendants. Right. And if you don't have any lineal descendants... Adopt one. Or you, possibly. <laughs> or if you, if you have children, but you don't like them, right. um, and you want to give your wealth to the... Well, not to a charity, because that would be relief to, uh, anyway, uh, but to someone else, yes. then you won't get the relief available. Okay. Um, and, and there are lots of other rules uh, regarding... So there is a financial benefit in having children. Not many, no. uh, but that, that, that's one of them. That's one of them. I can... well, for the children, I suppose, rather than the parents, because, of course, it's not the parents who pay the tax bill anyway. That's right, that's right. But there are some, some rules attached to that. So it, it's worth £175,000 per person, £350,000 as between a married couple, where all of the estate passes from one spouse to the other on the first death, then down to lineal descendants on the second death. Um the value of the property has to be uh, more than that threshold in order to use the full amount of the relief. If the value of the property is less than the available relief, then the excess is simply wasted. It can't be used on any other asset. Right. It's also capped. So for estates worth over £2 million in total, that relief, the residence near work band relief, it begins to taper away by one pound for every two pound over that threshold. So as between a husband and wife, by the time you get to 2.7 million, that residence nil rate band has completely disappeared. And you're back to the 650 or the 325 each. Absolutely correct, absolutely correct. Uh, So there are lots of other provisions as well regarding the ability to downsize. So if you had a big property and then you downsized down to a smaller one, you can still claim the full amount of the relief Paperwork is absolutely critical. You, your executors have got to have the evidence to hand to be able to claim that if you've downsized. So keep the completion statements when you sell one property. If you've gone into a care home, you can still claim the relief if you've owned a property at some point. Again, it comes down to evidence as well. It's so crucially important. So I'm already thinking that, um, I mean, could you just give your let's say that you've got an estate over £2 million mm. um, and you might not know when you're going to die but let's say that you you, you do yes. and you're poorly and you know there's only you know a couple of years to go and you think right could you just start giving your estate away now I understand that it won't giving your estate away may have an impact for inheritance tax purposes on gifts mm. but it could also presumably recover some of this Taper relief. Well, well, that's right, because um, lifetime gifts aren't considered when determining the value of the estate as at death. So you Um, could do it the day before you died, uh, if you knew you were going to die tomorrow. Potentially, you you know, give away other assets in your estate and and potentially that could work. Right. Um, The couple of the really important points, though, are, are to sort of consider both the planning on that first death and on the second death. I recently had an estate where um, the wife died uh, in in sort of late autumn and her estate was about sort of 1.1 million. Her estate under her will pass to her husband and he died only about a month or two later, which then put his estate to about sort of 2.4 million or something about that. Right. So what we did was execute a deed of variation to vary the estate of the mother who died first, to pass value down to the beneficiaries, which then reduced the value of the estate that passed into the the husband's estate when he died. And his estate was brought down to below two million. Wow. And we were able to claim the full amount of the residence nil rate band relief. And and for a lot of people at the moment who, who, who have wealth and they're in that bracket of sort of two million plus up to about three million, the focus in their estate planning at the moment is very much how they could potentially get their estate down to a limit where they can apply for that. When you get to sort of three million plus, uh, you know, the estate is such and, and its value is such that it's probably not going to be too much of a concern. Right. And I made that um, jovial comment about adopting children. Is, is that possible? Uh, so, so the residence nil rate band it applies to lineal descendants, but that does include adopted children and it includes stepchildren as well. 
Um, so there is planning that can be done. Though stepchildren, of course, is a, is another legal definition, isn't it? You do need to be married. I know some people think they would, would view that their children, that their new partner they're living with, they, they bring up the children and would view them as stepchildren. But unless they're, yes. unless they're actually married, that's not going to work, is it? That, that, that's right. They, they, they do need to be legally stepchildren right. of the deceased. Um, but the other thing that people can do is, you know, it, they can leave their home on a, a very particular type of trust for their children or lineal descendants uh, and still be able to qualify for the relief. Now, if somebody leaves their estate on a discretionary trust, they won't be able to qualify for the relief. Okay. But if they leave it on what's called an immediate post-death interest trust, and a life interest trust essentially, right. then... In certain circumstances, that can still qualify for the relief. Wow, interesting stuff. Um, what do people need to do to make sure they're going to get this? You know, to, to be you know to be able to claim this relief or yeah. the dependents, beneficiaries. Sorry. As as with any change in legislation, it's really important for people to go to that box under the bed, pull out their wills, and and review them uh, when sort of big legislative changes like this take effect because they need to make sure that the wills do what they need to do to allow the executors to be able to claim that relief. And it, it may be that actually nothing needs to be done. If, you know, in a very common situation, people leave all of their estate to, to their spouse on the first death and then to children uh, on the second, then the chances are they'll be able to claim the relief without doing anything further in their will. Um, but they do need to review that. And, and one of the things in particular is that, you know, in many wills, they leave their estate to their children, and then there might be a gift over to their grandchildren if their child has predeceased them. And often with that sort of gift, it will have an age contingency, say age 25. And that sort of conti age contingent provision in a will might actually prevent the executors from being able to claim the resident nil rate band even though they are lineal descendants. Wow. So it's really important to, to slightly change that term in a will yeah. to make sure that those grandchildren in that situation do have what's called a life interest. So executors are gonna, could have quite a challenging role in yeah. the future. Uh, potentially, yes. Um, but even if nothing is done, you know, there, there's quite often the ability to do what's called a deed of variation in an estate, or if there's a trust in the will to exercise certain powers of appointment in order to create the right circumstances where the relief can be claimed. So okay. it's not the end of the world. No, no. Um, get advice as per normal, I think. It's it's really important, especially with something so technically difficult yeah. as this residency. Yeah, well, I, you know, all the lawyers I've spoken to have all said, you know, thrown up their arms with <laughs> horror at the legislation. So it's difficult for the man in the street to understand it if the lawyers are getting in such a pickle over it. It really is. Um, where could, uh, just just so if someone was more interested in finding out more about residential nil rate band what resources would you advise them to i mean obviously i get they can go and seek advice but let's say they just want to find out more about it to get a greater understanding where could they look uh the actually the government website uh is actually a really good place to start and if you just google um residents nil rate band the government website will be one All of right. the top we'll ones put there. that in the show notes no and, problem and uh they, they they produce their notes in in a very readable format okay great um, and obviously the record keeping, as you said, is hugely important to understanding at what point people have downsized and that type of thing. It is, because we, we have a situation now uh, where there's, there's a nil rate band, there's a transferable nil rate band, there's a residence nil rate band and a transferable residence nil rate band. And, fun, fun, and, fun. And, <laughs> um, and in order for the executors to be able to claim those transferable reliefs, the paperwork is really important. On the occasion of the first death, uh, it's really important to keep all of those documents together. And as I said, when when you buy a property, when you sell a property, perhaps you're downsizing, you've got to have that paperwork and, and store it with your will. That's that's the best thing to do. Right. Great. Well, uh, that um, 
kind of sums that up quite nicely, Kurt. It <laughs> seems to be darn complicated and uh, I definitely will be seeking advice. Um, so uh, thanks once again for your time. Where, again, can people find out about you and your firm? So it's Lester Aldridge and you can find us on the website www.lesteraldridge.co.uk. Fantastic. Thanks for your time. Thanks again to Kurt for sharing his expertise in tax planning today. If you would like to listen back to Kurt's first interview on how to avoid inheritance tax traps, search for the episode one of the Retirement Cafe podcast released on 27th of November 2018, either on your preferred podcast player or on our website, which is theretirementcafe.co.uk. You can also find the show notes for this episode on the website, along with some useful links. To find out more about Kurt Lee or Lester Aldridge solicitors, visit Lester Aldridge aldridge.com or call their Bournemouth office on 01 202 786 Next week, I'll be chatting with Rory Percival, the man best known as the face of the Financial Conduct Authority for the past 10 years. Rory shares his personal story of what makes a successful retirement from an ex-regulator's point of view. Be sure to subscribe to catch this and every future episode. Until next time, this is Justin King helping you feel more informed in your retirement. Thank you for listening to the Retirement Cafe podcast with Justin King. To find out more, you can find us online at theretirementcafe.co.uk. 